Well, we've been talking about the fact that we are looking at risk in the marketplace. Uh, and this is my asset timing model for the real estate asset class. We've been talking ad infinitum that problems are coming. We got two really, really good indicators in the last few days. Let me go through them. But risk is real. It's imminent. So let's go to my very next slide and let's just talk a look, take a look at what we've been looking at. So in March, we had employment come in and employment is changing. So you know that the government has a tendency of, uh, you know, they downward revise and they give us a great headline number. Now, this is March of uh, 2024. Employment picture, losing full-time jobs and gaining part-time jobs. Now, we lost only about 6,000 jobs here uh, full-time. We didn't gain any. We lost them, but we gained 691,000, 691,000 jobs. Now, typically, the government doesn't break them down into part-time because that's not so good. But this is what it was. So no full-time jobs and 691,000 part-time jobs. Now, in talking with our tenants and people on the street and people we know, you know, the people are struggling out there. We know that uh, a lot of people, if you lose your full-time job, you still need 50, 40, 50 hours a week just to pay the bills. So you got to go out and get two, maybe three part-time jobs just to pay the bills. And you know, these part-time jobs just don't pay what a full-time job does. They don't get benefits too. Not a pretty picture for our economy. We've been talking about that in our prior videos. By the way, if you like our videos, please like and subscribe. We're not going to ask you for money. We're not going to send you things. But I'm going to tell you, if you like and subscribe and give us comments, I'd love to hear what's going on and in, in, uh, what your thoughts are on this. Boy, I'll tell you, YouTube uh, algorithms just absolutely love that. really helps us about. So let me get back to what we're talking about here. We're talking about employment. So we're going to talk about employment. And we're going to talk about the PMI. So employment for March, 691,000 jobs part-time, but uh, 691 none, nonetheless. So let me go to my next slide. I'm going to blow this up so you can see this a little bit. This is coming out of the jolts. This is job openings, and it's obviously softening. That red line on the top there, that's a ratio showing that the uh, – uh, jobs, the jobs available is slowing down. And you can see on the green and the blue, the jobs, the actual jobs are really, really slowing. There's just not that many available. Now, I'm also being here that the ones that are available, really, they're trying to fish for uh, their competitors, uh, workers, because they make these stringent requirements. So, you know, this is also a little deceiving because I don't think it's quite as good as what it is. And this is looking awful. So I think it's even really awful. This is awful. I think it's even worse awful. Let me go to my next slide and let's just talk about that because here's here is where it really becomes very very interesting. So we just got this from Zero Hedge like uh, today, and we're talking about April. So last month we're talking about the establishment. So the establishment jobs came out and said 175,000 new jobs, and the household yes, you know, so they pick up the phone and say only 25,000 new jobs. Now, remember, let me go back to uh, two slides. In March, we were talking about 691,000 new jobs. They were part-time, but they're, they're jobs. And now look where we're at, 175,000. Yikes. So what happens to these guys? That's, what, 400,000, 500,000, 400-some 400 thousand less jobs? And if you're in a household, 25,000. Holy cow, it's like 650,000 less jobs? Not a pretty picture, guys. That is, you know, employment is really what holds everything together. You know, uh, I, as you know, I think we went, entered into recession in, uh, you know, October, November of uh, 2023. You know, the NPR, they, they, it, it takes them two years to, to, to recognize this. And of course, you know, these recessions, they start soft and then they roll into it and they, they pick up speed. So I think we're starting to look, you know, everyone's concerned about employment. Now, we've been seeing it softening. We're starting to get some data that's telling us that uh, it's softening uh, a lot. And this means that you need to pay attention. Now, in, in my asset class, I would be very, very cautious on whatever you purchase. I think we have much better opportunities coming to us. And I think if you need to sell, I think next year prices for 
for uh, commercial properties and prices for single family homes are gonna be a lot less than they are today. So there is no advantage for you to wait. I would sell and sell as quickly as I possibly can because we're seeing this deteriorate right before our eyes. If you wanna talk with us, we're more than happy to, to discuss these things with us. But let me go to my next slide and let's, let's see if we can make some uh, ideas out of this one. Now I'm going to tell you. Here's you know all these all these statistics are just a little bit uh, soft, you know a little bit different. So here's non-farm payroll. This is even worse. So when you look at non-farm payroll, the government, you know, the government has just been hiring people like crazy. You know, they're putting more and more people onto onto their jobs. But last month in April, they only added eight thousand jobs. You know. We got 330 million people here and they added 8,000 in government and in private sector only added 167,000. So, wow, that's 170, that's 175,000 jobs that we're talking about, not too much. So uh, let me go to my next slide. This is going to astound you, I, I guarantee. Look at this. Now, you know, we've been talking about the fact that uh, they're seasonally adjusted. We're talking about the fact that they've got a birth death model that, uh, that they add things and they say, oh, well, our birth death model says we should have had more jobs. You know, it should have, it should have been better. So we're going to add jobs in. Well, I'm going to tell you, in April, they added 363,000 jobs, but we only gained 175. So we were way below. We lost a lot of jobs and they had to add 363,000 fake jobs to get up to 175,000. That is very, very bad news. You need to be really, really cautious at this time. I keep saying, don't spend any money. Get cash put together. Get out of debt. Pay your credit cards off. Protect your credit. Make sure you pay your bills because we're going to want to buy some stuff and you're going to need your credit. And for all that you can, protect your income streams, protect your job, make sure that that's secure because we are going to make a lot of money. Not yet, but it's coming sure as Sure as the sun rises in the morning, this is going to happen. Let me go to my next slide. Let's just take a look at this. It gets uh, it gets even more astounding. Now we're going to start talking about the the purchasers managers index, and I love to pick on Chicago because Chicago, you know, is one of our endangered cities. But Chicago is one of the big manufacturing hubs of the country. Great, great transportation. They got great workers. They just have a great environment for for manufacturing. And look what's happening. They're rivaling the great financial crisis in uh, declines. Five months in a row, not very, very good of manufacturing has declined. Let me go to my next slide and let's just take a look at that. This is even, even more astounding. So this is coming from the uh, PMI. We're starting to look, this comes from uh, Danielle DiMartino Booth. One of, our, uh, one of our good friends sent this to us. So I'm gonna tell you the Chicago PMI new orders down, uh, production down employment down, and we have backlogs. You know, you can't get stuff. Well, those backlogs are rising, which is telling us that things are starting to slow down all through the pipeline. Speaking of pipeline, look at this next slide. Now, we're talking about manufacturing with 12, I'm sorry, 17 downward revisions in 22 months. This is U.S. production, which means all our manufacturing and our producing is slowing down. Look at this. Now this, look, just look, take a quick peek at this one. So this is talking about the ISM. You know, we're looking at producer prices accelerating. And that's that red line there. You can see it's it's going up, not down. Now we've talked about the fact that there's probably three waves of, three waves of inflation. Finishing the first wave, we're down that low trough. That's why everyone says, oh, everything's just rosy. No, we're just troughing. And I think you can look at this producer price index and see that at the producer level, you know, that's where things, the raw materials come in, and this is where the producer price is uh, being paid. That's accelerating. But we're seeing, let me just open this up. This is going to astound you. You're going to be pretty interested in this. So we're seeing new orders declining and employment de declining. So they're having to lay people off and the orders are declining, but yet they're paying more for uh, for their uh, uh, raw material. That is a classic, classic, hold on, classic stagflation. 
costs more as the economy stagnates and slows down. That's a clear case of inflation coming. And you know, at the producer, the producer price, uh, price index, if they start paying for it, we don't get that for 12 or 15 months. We don't see that. So that's the second wave that you're looking at here. So um, we're going to be talking about the fact that we want to protect ourselves. Again, get out of debt as quickly as you possibly can. Protect your jobs. Raise cash because we are going to make a lot of money as it's coming in. Let me go to my next slide. Let's just talk about this. Let me blow this up a little bit. So this is what the uh, what we heard from the, uh, the ISM uh, uh, index. They're saying that they're seeing uh, prices rose at a faster level. We just talked about that. New orders fell, signaling contraction. Employment fell, signaling contraction. Inventories fell, signaling contraction. Supplier deliveries fell, signaling contraction. Production fell, signaling contraction. And backlogs fell at a slower pace, signaling contraction. <sighs> wow. Brace for impact, guys. You know, this is, you know, the government doesn't want you to see this for some reason. You know, I guess you're not you're not strong enough to take this kind of information. This this should really be held back and maybe sugar coated, you know, and we'll all get a trophy when we grow up. So this is not good. So protect your business. Now we're investors, so we want to protect our inv our uh, our tenants. We want our tenants to do well. And when we get new tenants, we are we are focusing on the tenant, not focusing on the rent. We want a good tenant. So we're willing to discount a little bit. You know, if the rent is $2,000, we will take $1,900. You know, put it on the market at $1,950, $1,975, a little bit below market. Get five or six applications and take the one that has the strongest credit and the strongest job opportunities. Because we're only as good as our tenants. And you can see this. You can see this in the you can see this in the data. The data just doesn't doesn't lie. Let me get my next slide here. Now this is what's causing problems. Now we've talked about the fact that we've got real estate foreclosures. You know it's uh, it's 19.8 percent national vacancy, but that's with a lot of these S and P companies honoring their leases. Nobody going to the office itself, but they're paying for the space anyway because they're honoring the lease that they have. Once those leases are um, expire, they're not going to pay, and you are going to see that um, you're going to see that vacancy skyrocket, and it's causing problems. We're already seeing real estate foreclosures are jumping 117 percent. Holy cow! You know, if you're a lender and you've lent some commercial loans, you know you've got to have some sleepless nights. Let me go to my next slide. And there's no help from the Fed. We've talked about this. You follow our videos. We've been saying there is not going to be any help from the Fed. They are not going to reduce rates. It's higher for longer. Let me go to my next slide. This is the one I want to get to. I just want to show you this. This is just absolutely awful. So here's this building at 909 East Chestnut Street in St. Louis, Missouri, sold in 2006 for $205 million and literally it just sold at a 98% loss. Can you imagine that? 98% loss. It sold for $3.5 million, less than 2% of what they paid for it in 2006. Now, how would you like to be the owner of that? You know, you got your money into a REIT, and the REIT bought this property. I think it's a great deal in 2006, and it falls apart. How would you like to be the lender? You know, there's a loan on that property. Probably 70%. They probably lost $130, $140 million. And what if you had your money with that bank? Or what if you were a stockholder in that bank? This is not, this is not a really, really good thing. So we're telling you, we have better pricing coming. If you need to sell something, I cannot say this often enough. Prices will be better now than next year. What our charts say, I, don't, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. So there's no advantage to keeping your property, sell it and sell it now. If you have any kind of questions, call us. Let me go to my next slide. This is where we're at. I'm with West USA here in Phoenix, uh, Arizona. We do, you know, West USA does five, six billion dollars. They're one of the top brokerages in the nation. They do our back office and our compliance. We here, we are very good at what we do. We'd love to have your business. You know, you're welcome to call us. Uh, just call, we'll set an appointment for you and we can do some consultations. Please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. 
give us some comments. Let me know what's going on in your marketplace. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. Let me know what you think of my, of my analysis on this. My very best to you guys. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye now.